to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Friday, September 8th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back with you, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Joining you for this Friday episode of the show. Lots of matchups to get into today. We had a little game called football. Played, Real football. Played last night. Jason's in a Navy shirt today. Oh, it's a crazy day today. <laughs> Which, uh, what do the statistics say, Kyle? Well, how many Navy shirts have we had in nine years? Uh, it's it's at least eight a year, so I'll have to do math. Oh, you do, a, math you, on. You do about eight a year? Eight a year. And we that do seems... about 150 shows? Yeah. I'm I'm honest That's still a better catch percentage than Sky Moore. <laughs> uh, I am shocked <laughs> hey, it's that hey, high. Hey, hey, hey. He caught a pass. It was it called, was back. called yeah. back. He did. Yeah. He did catch pass. He, because that was just for you, Mike. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, he's just not good at football. He's just really, really not good at football. Yeah. I think the issue is he is too small. <laughs> I just do. He just he's too little. There were Patrick Mahomes came could have had him for about a 25, 30 yard gain. Are you talking at the beginning of the game? Uh towards the beginning, yeah, where yes. he, where he came across the middle and it there, just there was a pick was play out of his reach. Set up well, there was a pick play at the beginning set up for Sky Moore. Oh, you watched it all, Mike. Oh yeah, because I played Sky Moore, which, <laughs> which was so dumb. Oh. It, well, here's the reasoning behind it. I was I am up against like the most stacked team in the league right now, and it was I got I have to throw Lightning something in a bottle. In, I have to throw something in for upside, and with Travis Kelsey out. This is the one opportunity. Clearly, did not work. Uh, not, I mean, Sky Moore is not a player that I've been really excited about all off season. It was just second year player. They were talking about him as a starter. He ran which, a lot of routes. He ran the second most routes on the team, which just, is embarrassing. It just Patrick Mahomes does not like Sky Moore. This was, uh, and, and just to get right into it, 21-20, the Detroit Lions take Congratulations, a huge, Detroit. Dude, awesome. huge win. I was, I was definitely rooting for them last night. I wanted to see them get off to the start that they, that they have now. But this was a lot of the Chiefs losing this ball game. This was uh, a game they could have won. No Travis Kelsey. Now we know. Damn. Now we know. Now we know that yeah, receivers sure. do matter. When Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill are gone. We learned a, a lot of very important things for fantasy last night, even things that uh, might not seem like they went well. We learned, like Travis Kelsey being gone. Oh, that sucks. But you know what we learned? Your Travis Kelsey pick was great. <laughs> Your yes, Travis it was. Kelsey <laughs> pick was awesome, and you're going to love having him <laughs> soon. Don't worry. So what if he misses another week? Yeah. They need him so, so bad. I also thought it was just incredibly brilliant coaching from Dan Campbell to pay for Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore. Yes. Uh, yes. At, Especially the Tony one. I mean, just genius work to really have them out there, uh, out there on the field, dive bombing the chiefs. Just brilliant. Kadarius stroke. Tony was the equivalent of a self placed land mine. He was literally yeah. the MVP of the Detroit Lions. It was one of the worst performances comprehend. Like Sky Moore was, not as bad as Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore caught zero passes, and out of ele there were eleven eligible receivers in the game for the Chiefs. The only one not to catch a pass was Sky Moore, who ran so many routes and was and, always on the field. And um and and yet Kadarius Tony made many who were watching want a new category added for quarterbacks, which I think we're capable of doing. Like there should oh, be oh, sure. look in baseball, if you if you hit the ball. And it goes between the shortstop's legs. You don't get credit for a single. Yep. It's called an error. There's a difference between Patrick Mahomes hitting Kadarius Tony square between the hands, and then they're like, the next line out of their mouths for the announcers was, "It's the first interception thrown by Patrick Mahomes in an opening game since he came into the league." No, it wasn't. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It was a perfect pass to a player who just had his eyes closed the whole game and. When he was handed the ball, it, yeah, he looked man. like a player that had four or five knee braces on. He was slow. 
He deleted his own Twitter after the game. Oh, yeah. Get rid of the phone, which, Kadarius. It's which, not look, a good I, place for you out here. You should not be tweeting at Tony. No. Uh, uh, you the, can tweet about him. Sure. But do, don't tag the dude. Yeah. Uh, which uh, clearly must have been happening. But, yeah, Kadarius Tony is getting the Baxter boot off the bridge from my team on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. i thinking about putting a petition into the commissioner myself uh, to allow me to drop him ahead of time. Yeah, if you don't just – and you promise not to pick anyone up. I won't up. pick anybody up. You I just, just want, want him off the I roster. I don't want him <laughs> near the rest of my players. I get it. That's a brilliant stroke of Do you of think that genius. I could – would you consider letting me do that? I would vote for it. I would yeah. allow it. I've, I don't sure. think he should be now, I on did not, the roster. I, I, I wasn't silly enough to play him. Right. <laughs> that, that would be embarrassing. He was on my bench, but uh, – I Yesterday, because we were playing each other. Yes, sir. You had mentioned at one point, if Travis Kelsey doesn't go, that you might play Kadarius Tony, And I I literally was trying to get you to play Kadarius Tony. Were you? I, oh, were big you? time. Oh. I wanted it so bad. I was like, that's now, not going to work. Kad no, I did not do it. Kadarius Tony's line was one catch for one yard. Huh. Uh, he did have a carry for negative one yards, but because he had the catch for one yard, uh, he outscored Sky Moore then, correct? That seems because in, accurate. Yeah, he doesn't normal, get minus points for in, his drop. In normal Psst. scoring, uh, Sky Moore would have had a half a point, and then in a half point PPR, Kadarius Tony would have had – no, or they may be tied. I don't know. This is a Whatever. debate that is irrelevant <laughs> for fantasy, and the truth is – Spin the wheel of targets outside of Kelsey. That is the problem. Mm -hmm. The real fantasy message, and you guys disagree with me if you want, the real fantasy message is that it is a completely agnostic target universe for Patrick Mahomes outside of Kelsey. He is. It could be McKinnon. It could be Noah Gray. It can be Rashi Rice. It can be Justin Ross. It can be Sky Moore. It could be Kadarius Tony. It can be MBS. It's none of them. It, Richie James. If it's everyone, yeah. It, if it's everyone, it's nobody, right? Yeah, I yes. mean, I, I I believe that the the ninety five percent odds are that nobody will emerge as a weekly starter here, other than Travis Kelsey. You can play DFS lineups and take your shot because the you know people will have big games when you play for Patrick Mahomes, but it's not going to work. If I the five percent to me is still Rasheed Rice. I agree with you. He is a rookie that, way, too, that can earn his way onto the field. He didn't play that many snaps, run that many routes, and he was involved. He was more productive. He did you know find the the spot in the zone for a touchdown. Granted, it was nothing special he did on that play. Well, but he made the smart play. I he mean, caught he it. He sat in the zone. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is actually a really good <laughs> let's needle not, mover. Let's not take that away he from him. He did catch that ball, which was very, very difficult for Chiefs wide receivers. So, yeah, if if I'm going to make a bet on this team, it's going to be Rushy Rice. Um, and there move, might be openings for him. Else. He may have some opportunities. And Kelsey will take away from the defense. And may, it's one game. Like you said, best ball's the place to live with some of these guys. But um, it was tough. It was tough to watch that. It was tough to, uh, you know, uh, the leading receiver was Isaiah Pacheco. He had four receptions uh, for 31 yards. He had eight carries. So, you know, he led the team in carries and receptions. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't a very productive fantasy day for Chiefs options. On the other side of the ball. Very interesting. David Montgomery had 21 carries for 74 and a touchdown. The most David Montgomery stat line. Three and a half that a you carry. Can get. Three, yeah, three and a half a carry, but crazy volume and a touchdown. Jameer Gibbs had seven carries for 42 yards. Dude. He also tripped on a – I mean, I watched the – On the uh, turf. He tripped on the turf because his cut was too fast. He – And he would have scored. Yeah. I mean, you, you can go look at the uh, – 100%. They, what do when, they call that film? The, uh, the All-22. The All-22. I mean, there were no – other Chiefs on that side of the field. Yeah, if he didn't slip, it was a touchdown, and then anyone complaining about Jameer Gibbs wouldn't be super upset. Obviously, the issue if you watch the game, two and passes, you're a, 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 eighteen yards. A, a Jameer Gibbs uh, manager, and and you're starting him. You're disappointed because you're like, oh, he's not out there enough, and you want him out there more. I I get it, but if you watched that game, you also recognize that David Montgomery was a lumbering, worse than Jamal Williams type of player, Ooh. aided by the offensive line that is excellent for the Detroit Lions, by comparison to Jameer Gibbs, who was an absolute outstanding athlete, looked great every time he touched the ball. He will get worked more into the game. They came out and said Jameer Gibbs yeah, might Dan be Campbell brought along the truth. slowly as a rookie when you're playing against the world champion Patrick Mahomes led like 
You can't have rookie mistakes if you want to win that game. And so I don't blame them for their utilization of Gibbs, and it's not going to stay this extreme. I do think Montgomery will be super involved every single game without injury, and Gibbs will be more of the change of pace, but he'll get enough work as the season goes on to be excellent. I would be trading for Gibbs if managers are super disappointed in what they saw yesterday. It was a nice debut for Sam Laporta. He looked the part, was out there almost every single snap, and lining up out wide a lot, mm -hmm. and there's going to be opportunity there. He had five receptions in his debut. That was, the, I think, the second most over the last five years for a rookie tight end. I w were you impressed? I were was you, super impressed. Yeah, I think the, he looked like a pro. The way that he caught the ball, he's a rookie. He's he's not going to be phenomenal this year. Um, that being said, you, you played him against me because of the Travis Kelsey injury in our I can live with it. league of record, and I was I was disappointed with uh, as as the one against him. He he didn't you know get a touchdown. He didn't put up a monster day. But I was like, man, they are really utilizing him in the offense. So it's certainly someone you got to pay attention to going forward. 14.2% target share for him. Josh Reynolds led the team in yards. Amon Ra was the best receiver by far. And there you go. Impressive win. Really, I think it's really exciting for football when, when new teams emerge as contenders. And they, you know, they showed their moxie on the road in Arrowhead. I mean, we said the stats yesterday morning. The Chiefs don't lose openers. No. Detroit, you deserve this. And I'm so happy for – you know, as as a Cardinals fan, I know what it's like yeah. to be the Detroit Lions type of franchise. And what an awesome you, you've got expectations. You know, the fourth highest odds to come out of the NFC, uh, the highest odds to win the division. You've got expectations, and most of the time, those things are hard to live up to. Coming out week one, beating the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Congrats, man. Which which they they finished last year nine and seven, but started one and six, mm -hmm. which meant that they went eight and two the re remainder of the season, and then won last night continuing it it's nice mike it's just the it, just more lions love of uh, for guns mahoney aka dan campbell the going for it on the lined up in the 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 fake punt at the beginning of the game and then i believe that drive turned into a touchdown I it mean, did they were just you were that was a uh big huevos move oh, as big as they get and then so like but like that's optimal coaching is recognizing the situation of we we got to do something here. And then at the end of the game, they end up turning the ball over, but they went for it mm -hmm. on fourth, which was, in my opinion, 100%. It was the optimal play of, of you need to go for it right here. You can't give Mahomes. That's the one the where they tried to pass. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't know that the play call was what I would have gone with. And while I'm, I'll dap him up, but then <laughs> what's the, uh, the Marvin Jones uh, screen pass on like third and 10? And it was, they expect Marvin Jones to look better. Marvin I don't know. Was, Jones. So that play was a little bit weird, but overall, was it was a I thought it was a uh, very exciting game. Wish we had hit the over, but mm. uh, yeah, well, but we did not. But uh, I, still, great I, opening night. I had a good uh, showdown night. Yeah, uh, yeah, you did. Yeah, huh? yeah, that was that was fun to be back in it. And football being back, all the overreactions just bring them on. Yeah, I mean it's it's all that can happen. If you're going to talk fantasy from February till now, just bring the overreactions. It's part and parcel with what's going on. Uh, things will change over time. There you go. There's our reaction to Thursday night. A couple reminders at the top. You can join us. Become a part of the Foot Clan at jointhefoot.com. Get access to all the in-season perks. Check that out now. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every single Friday during the regular season, we have a giveaway on Friday to somebody who supports the show at jointhefoot.com. And today's winner of a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com is Beverly V. Beverly. Oh, congrats. Congratulations. First winner of the year. Hope you win your league because then you can get a sweet trophy at Fantasy Champs. There you go. Uh, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right. We the got some news. The PR team was, was doing work right before kickoff. I mean, it was perfect. Joe Burrow signs a five-year, $275 million extension through 2028. 
He's now the highest paid player in the history of the National Football League. Got the bag. Whoever the latest great quarterback to sign a contract is, is the highest paid player in the history of the sure, league. Sure, but is there another one? Like, who would be the next quarterback who could actually break the record? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a while. I think it will probably be Mahomes. Uh, yeah, that's as, true. As the that's next true. one re-upping yeah. his old deal. Or uh, I agree with that. Do you think? What do you think they'll do for Dak? Not, not that. Not set it that no. high. Okay, no. he's not going to beat Joe Burrow money. Terry McLaurin returned to a full practice on Thursday. Woohoo! George right. Kittle remained limited, yeah. which is the highest status he can receive. Kendra Miller did not practice due to hamstring. Is not expected to play, so Jamal Williams will have a backfield to himself. Uh, both Chark and Thielen did not practice on Thursday, but Adam Thielen has I'm a, back. He's back at practice today. I was at the buffet. <laughs> the buffet? Yeah, really. Oh, Mike really enjoys his Thielen voice, doesn't he? Where's my Adam? <laughs> they, they, hit the, they hit the buffet, um, the yeah. old people? Oh, the old people love buffets. Is, I, I think they like the cafeteria. Yeah, the cafeteria the, lines. The, the lubies. Yeah. It would just kind of serve buffet style. I get it. No, well, I, it's close enough. And the uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't know where I was. <laughs> where am I? Mark Andrews practiced again on Thursday. He was limited. Um, it, it's still TBD. You yeah, got this you, quote. You've got to be prepared. Yeah, go ahead and read it. Uh, the quote from Andrews after practice, asking about is he going to play? Quote: It's one of those things that's been a little tricky, but I'm feeling better. For me, I'm taking it day by day. God willing, <laughs> I'll be out there. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> what? Get on your knees, football oh, fans. Mark Andrews. Yeah. The, Say a prayer. I'm going to need a little more than that. Hopefully we know ahead of time because you might, if you're the Mark Andrews manager. Are they and, a morning game? Yeah. Can I just pause for a second? I'm having so much fun. It is so great to have football back. Yes, yes it is. Yeah, all the strategy, all that. But I, Isaiah likely <laughs> is the pivot that you want if Mark Andrews goes down, if you're the Mark Andrews manager. That's they, my they're belief. a morning game, so but thank goodness. Backholm is dealing with an ankle injury. But he's back at practice. Uh, but, yeah, he's back at the, the start of practice. But it, it should remind people the fragility of this, this pass-catching core has yeah. been an issue for years. You have Bateman, injury prone. Mm -hmm. Beckham, ankle. Andrews, banged up at the end of last year, banged up right now. J.K. Dobbins. Let's go. <laughs> Two legs, For hopefully. But um, it, it does, if Beckham was questionable, if Andrews wasn't on the field, it would give me more confidence to make a rookie start of Zay Flowers yeah. in week one. Uh, Packers wide receivers, this is wild. Romeo Dobbs returned to a limited practice. Christian Watson did not practice. Al Borland, how you how you feeling on this one? Uh, not great. <laughs> not great. <laughs> To be honest, uh, I didn't have report. a lot of optimism anyway. All right. So. Okay. Around Christian Watson? Christian Watson. No, around just his our season. Oh, okay. Yeah, pre prepping up for keep, that. Keep your uh, – if Watson does not go, keep an eye out for Jaden Reed, their rookie wide receiver, yes. who will play a whole lot more. And, and, and Luke. Luke. Yeah, yeah. Luke. Luke yeah. Musgrave. Yes. Uh, the, he will be – there's a rookie tight end who will be on the field all the time. He'll be an every down player and – you know, if Christian Watson is not there, Romeo Dobbs has his own issue he's coming back from. That's that's a, a Sam Laporta esque style yes. play. Would you would you trade Christian McCaffrey in a dynasty league for Damian Pierce, Luke Musgrave, and a first round draft pick? No. Th what if it was a first round pick you thought would be in the top five? That, More that, interesting. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I turned that down. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Ramondre Stevenson. Not seen what? participating on Friday, has not been on the injury report. We're what? gonna have to What? We're gonna have to dive in. Now when is uh don't we have the first injury blitz podcast? Yeah. Brooksy? Yeah, later this afternoon after all the Friday practices are, are done. So for brand new listeners, the injury blitz is a special bonus podcast brought to you bonus. by our injury expert and PT Matthew Betts. It is exclusively on jointhefoot.com and it is kind of a chance for the late Friday injury reports to factor into that that podcast. Kenneth Walker, the, lim ah, limited with a groin injury. This is bad. You hope that it's maintenance or protection, not re-injury. I do not believe it is maintenance. Um, we will see. T today's practice report will say everything. If he's full, great. If he's limited, then I don't believe that he plays this week. Is this, this the Zach Charbonnet 
Show. debut. Yeah, gracious. I mean, we, we've I rebuilt. I've got two lineups right now um, in DraftKings that I might play against you guys for our segment at the end of today's episode. One of them has Zach Charbonnet in it if uh, Ken Walker news looks bad. But he was added as a late addition in the week. He was practicing on full on Wednesday. So to uh, become limited if, with a groin injury that he spent almost all of the offseason dealing with. It's not good. No. Brooksy, let us know if you hear anything before the end of the show. You got it. All right, that was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with all of the remaining matchups. It's a good reminder, Jason. We do have the fantasy face-off returning at the end of today's show. Mm -hmm. So much fun. I'm ready to turn over a new leaf this year. This is going to be your year, Andy. There was a really nice uh, Raps gang gets credit for this. He put a gif up of, I think, was that every punishment from last year, Justin? Uh, I think it was quite a few. Because there was a oh. lot of me in there. <laughs> well, well, do better this year. Yeah. Oh, 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 that's, yeah. Oh, get body. I don't take offense to the reality that I was the wheel of shame winner. In a that's way, true. Yeah, in a matter you... of speaking. All right, let's do it. Fantasy Forecast. Well, if I was a rookie quarterback looking to start my season, it would not be in Baltimore against the Ravens. The Texans travel this week. Baltimore, nine and a half point home favorites. Over unders 44. Uh, that gives Baltimore almost 27 points. Houston, not as many. So this is a heavy <laughs> favorite situation. Teams favored by nine plus points over the last five years have averaged 29 points per game. So it's going to be delicious for Baltimore this week. However, you do need to play in the game to score fantasy points. So we'll be watching Beckham, Andrews. If Beckham's out there, is he a flex option? Um, Bias removed from dealing with Beckham over the years, just looking at the fact that he's a starter in this offense. I don't think so. I, I, you know, I still worry a little bit about uh, the passing need in this game for the Baltimore Ravens. Whether or not, you know, if 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 Mark Andrews can't go and Odell Beckham didn't go, then there's like this consolidation where okay, maybe Zay Flowers or or Bateman, uh, you're willing to take a shot at. But um, just because Beckham is out there, Zay Flowers we know is going to be out there. Bateman, it looks like he should be good to go. So I'm. I'm not really wanting to start any of the pass catchers here because it's going to be s split up, and they. I just don't think they're going to be passing the ball a lot in the second half. I will be interested to watch uh, Will Anderson get acclimated on the defensive line. Uh, PFF has Houston at 23 on the defensive line rankings this year. It should be a little bit better there. Even just, just adding Will Anderson is going to improve that defensive line, uh, but it should be bright and sunny days for J.K. Dobbins and company. Yeah. Damian Pierce, it's a tough matchup in week one. You are, you know, if I am the Baltimore Ravens, I am doing, I'm stopping Damian Pierce. Yes. That is the only thing I have to worry about. And so the nice thing, at least historically, we've seen Houston relentless, even when they shouldn't be running the football, and that has led to touches. But it's a tough, tough, tough matchup. And that puts Damian Pierce squarely in the, Post week one trade target if it doesn't go the right direction, assuming the the opportunities are there. It could, but I'm not very worried about it. It's kind of like what we talked about with James Conner yesterday. The matchups are always going to be not in his favor when you're one of the worst two teams in the league. Uh, you know, it it it's always going to be like, oh, your team is projected to lose. You're going to be down. And and you look back at last season. You know, they played against the Philadelphia Eagles unbelievably good run defense. He was a top 12 running back. Yeah. Uh, played against Dallas. He was the running back 16. Cleveland had a good defense running back 21. He he should be an RB2 or better this week and, and most weeks. So I'm, you know, if you drafted Damian Pierce, I'm not scared off by this matchup. CJ Stroud gets to make his debut. Historically, uh, rookie first round quarterbacks in week one, they averaged 216 passing yards and 19 completions. Are we done talking about Houston as a fantasy option this week? Uh, Houston is see. one fantasy option. It's Damian Pierce yeah. to check out. The, yeah. 
Well, Dalton, uh, Dalton Schultz? No. I'm no. I'm I'm not in on Dalton oh, Schultz. Oh, the doctor. He's not. No, the doctor is on vacation. He's not in. Uh, but the it will be fun to to watch week one, see how the wide receiver room shakes out. You know, Robert Woods is the veteran. Does he get the treatment and become automatically the number one? Nico Collins has flashed at times and been a really interesting player. Does he emerge? We talked about him on one? the footcast yesterday. Sure. Uh, I look at drafting Nico Collins identically to drafting uh, Jonathan Mingo. You know, Nico is 6'4", 216. He's a big guy. He's definitely better than Robert Woods. Woods is, is, is toast. He's getting the Houston final contract. I'm not saying go get him. I'm just saying he, he is a one on this roster. Yeah, I'm, I'm – which I agree, and then like that's what I, that's what I'll be watching for. The Green Bay Packers travel to Chicago. The Bears are one point home favorites. The over under just forty two points. Bears being favorites in this matchup feels weird because they've only been a favorite against Green Bay four times since two thousand and eight, when Rodgers became the starter. Does that mean Rodgers was injured four times against the it Chicago could, Bears? Honestly, it could have been. That's my guess. And uh, Justin Fields, he was the quarterback five on the week the last time he took on the Green Bay Packers. He didn't even have a passing touchdown in that game. You don't need him. It was six for 71 and one on the ground. Are you excited about this matchup, seeing Jordan Love make his, his debut? I'm oh, very excited I'm for this pumped. matchup uh, NFL-wise. Like, uh, the, w the, We have a lot of questions to answer in this. We want to know and have – definitive proof that Khalil Herbert's the guy that's the belief I think that's the belief everywhere now so that that should come to fruition but it'll be nice to have that confirmed we want to see the passing game do they open it up a little bit more which I believe they will do and does that mean that DJ Moore can squeak into the top 12 wide receivers um, and how is the the passing evolution of Justin Fields and then on the other side I mean, we don't know which wide receivers are going to be there, but they're, they're questions we want to see and, and how it relates to Jordan Love. Is he good? This game is absolutely one of the games I'm going to be watching the closest. The Bears were not good defensively against quarterbacks and wide receivers last year, so there's opportunity if somebody gets out there. Weren't good against running backs either. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, Mike, are they both starts? Uh, Aaron Jones is for sure a start, and I, I brought up A.J. Dillon in our new Hungry for More segment, and I think that as a – kind of low low end running back to no, no. low the AJ Dillon uh, it, look last year Bears 28th against fantasy running backs giving up over 25 points a game AJ Dillon is I think in play as a low flex option the Raiders take on the Denver Broncos in Denver this week DraftKings Sportsbook line Denver minus three and a half the over under 44 so the Raiders took both games against the hapless Denver offense last year. Got a brand-new quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. Still handsome, mm -hmm. just wearing the black uh, yeah. and the silver this year. Russell Wilson, still an annoying. He's still Russell Wilson. Still a little bit annoying. <laughs> a lot of questions. Unlimited. But still unlimited. Uh, does he get off to a hot start in this game? Well, the matchup says that you can. Um, which is really nice for Sean Payton and Russell Wilson to have the opportunity week one to say, hey, we, we fixed the offense. We've, we've got some things figured out. I think they'll be better than they were last year, which isn't saying much. They were the bottom of the barrel. Right now, I, I, I am hesitant to believe that Russell Wilson is quote-unquote fixed. The way that he was playing last year was so poor in his reads and his throws that um, I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach. I do think you can play a lot of these pieces. Um, I, I just think you have to really temper your expectations. Cortland Sutton is a good flex. I think he should be out there. Um, Javante Williams seems like a really good flex option as well. If this, I think he's a running back too. What are the odds least. that Javante Williams makes the fantasy community look silly after this week? I mean, I mean, if he falls into the end zone and catches four or five passes, then you're going to, at the end of this week, go, man, he's going to have an unbelievable year and be great. I, I still believe uh, that P. Ryan will be heavily involved. This will be a – What if he runs into the end zone and doesn't fall into it? If it's or a, what if it's a bit of a jump? Uh, you know, a breakaway, a, a breakaway run, I think that would be something special. Well, I, like, I just mean relative to draft costs. Is there a chance that he comes out, he gets 20 – two opportunities and he's a workhorse and he should have gone in the second round i'll be shocked if he gets 22 okay. opportunities 
Mike, are you in the same boat? Yeah, but I, I think P. Ryan's going to play probably pretty close to the same snaps. Jerry Judy was limited on Thursday. If he starts, do you play him against this defense? I prefer not to. All right. And just, if, just if be- Judy misses, Marvin Mims is in. If Judy's back, is Mar- Marvin Mims a sit? Marvin Mims is a sit if Judy is active. And if Judy is gone, Marvin Mims is not a need to start, but he is a flex option that you can throw in. I'm I'm starting him pretty much either way uh, well, in our yeah. league of records. He's so. your Sky more this uh, week, Jason. Yes, uh, yes, he is. Uh, cheers. Uh, cheers. Except the up. difference is I think Marvin Mims is actually good at football. Um, so. he's, tall, he's taller. Isn't he? M- Marvin Mims? Marvin Mims. Uh, no, he's, he's not taller than Sky Moore? I don't, nah, think, I don't think so. See, then he's it's going to be hard for him to get the hands up there and he's catch. A, he's a small player, but catch he was, the overthrows. He's unbelievable. 5'11". He's a great wide receiver. And Sky Second Moore. round pick like Sky oh, no. Moore. He is, in fact, taller than Sky Moore. Wow. Yeah. Doesn't take much. All right. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you can but start much him. But thinner. I, one of the things I'm going to be watching for a lot in this game is the Greg Dulcich, Adam Troutman split and utilization <laughs> yeah. um adam troutman is the starter mike He's is so happy blocker. you even have to think about I know. it that i have to say <clears throat> adam troutman's name yeah i love it i do think if that- you were flexing dulcich or mims with judy out which would you go with because if they were in a flex spot both uh, are, both could benefit from the lack of options yeah i would rather flex the wide receiver over a tight end um but you could argue that dulcich is more important if you're playing him in the tight end role I, the, the preseason utilization of Greg Dulcich was very, very scary to people. I'm still of the mindset that I think they were hiding him and not showing their cards. So I will have all eyes on Dulcich. To the see Joker has... card. Nice. Thank exactly you. right. Josh Jacobs absolutely massacred the Broncos defense last year. He was the RB1 and the RB7 against them at 175 rushing yards, 160 rushing yards. Are we getting vintage Josh Jacobs in week one? Vintage? No, but you play him. Yeah, so I mean, You play him with full confidence. Yeah, okay. he'll, he'll be an RB1. One. He'll be an RB1 this week. Devontae Adams. He gets to yep. start for the first time with Jimmy G, but you're playing him. You drafted him to play him. Yeah, of and course. And that's the end of that story. The Eagles take on the New England Patriots in New England. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has Philly minus four on the road. Oh, little bit rain. Over under is 45. Uh, we do have some possible rain in this game. We also have an update on Ramondre Stevenson. Ooh, important. Uh, he is still expected to play Sunday despite today's absence from practice. Takes for nothing. Per source. Reporters. So there's something going on. That's what that says. It wasn't like a personal absence, I don't think. It's, no. So that means Zeke could get more work in this game against a uh, Eagles defensive front. This is... Pretty terrible news. This is an afternoon game, so if you're waiting on Ramondre Stevenson, you better have a backup option just in case, or hopefully we get more news between now and game time. If Ramondre plays, man. You have to play him. Yeah, I think if Ramondre does, if if you get the – he's active uh, for week one, I'm just going to put him out there. Agreed. Yeah. Does Mac Jones get fixed by Bill O'Brien? Is this uh, are we going to find ourselves drafting pass catching options or not drafting picking up pass catching options for the Patriots after Week One? Uh, I doubt it. Um, I I do think that the offense will be much better than last year because of Bill O'Brien. I think Mac Jones will be a nice uh, quarterback too for uh, super flex leagues. I am still of the belief that Juju Smith Schuster will be the clear and obvious wide receiver one for this team, but he'll be very very similar to Jacoby Myers last year. More of a dink and dunk, a lot of targets, uh, not a lot of yards, PPR type of player. But to me, I think he will end up being a solid weekly start. Hunter Henry, I think, is uh, a sneaky, okay play this week. On the other side, play Hurts, yes. play A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, play Dallas Goddard, and then uh, spin the wheel for the running back room. I mean – you could. The Patriots were a top 10 defense against the run last year. They're at home. I don't think it's a good matchup no. for any of them, and there's four of them to there's, worry about. There's absolutely no reason to play an Eagle. You didn't draft any of those players where you have to start them. You have another option on your roster. I think Swift was like a sixth, seventh round pick. Yeah, but our listeners didn't draft him. Hopefully. Well, we'll see. Kenny Gainwell, <laughs> DeAndre Swift, Rashad Penny, and Boston Scott. I talked to somebody who's uh, one of the – 
people that follow the Eagles the most and his opinion of this backfield was that is going to be gross, that you're, you're going to see all four players play, that you're going to see Boston Scott come in only inside the five-yard line and that you're going to pull your, pull your hair out. Okay. And Jason made the point earlier in the offseason, Miles Sanders finished at 11 last year, and it wasn't a fun ride. Yeah, it sucked for fantasy. He ruined your team as often as he had nice big games. He, he And that was that was about as good as you could expect from, from an Eagles running back here. Miami. The Dolphins go to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers. This is another one of those here we go exciting football yeah. games for fantasy. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Chargers minus three. The over-under is 51. Does the line surprise you at all, or, or does that make sense to you? I think the line is exactly where I would expect it to be. Where, where, how, how did it surprise you? By you asking the question that said. Yeah, I guess I thought it might be like a point, not hmm. three points. I, 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 I think at home, yeah. Herbert. The offensive line issues for the Dolphins. Yeah, I, I think the line is right. All right, so Tua was Mike's start of the week. The Chargers gave up a ton of big plays last year, and that is going to be the specialty all year for Tua with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, who are both in your lineup. We've had uh, some start sets coming out of this game, including uh, making the decision on, you know, do you play – Tua Tungavailoa, or do you go with somebody like Dak or an Anthony Richardson or played Tua. Um, Deshaun Watson? And, and Tua's kind of seemingly taking the cake on all of those. Yeah, for, for me, I, I go Geno and then Tua in that order personally for the two quarterbacks I play outside of the, the eight known commodities that no one is benching. All right, Raheem Mostert, is he a good start this week? He is a very good start this week. Chargers very don't Very good. Yeah, I, I think okay. he's a very good start. You, you're you're going to have an elder statesman at the healthiest he's going to be all season um, in a matchup that is winnable, high over under. There, you've got Jeff Wilson definitely gone right now. Uh, uh, Ahmed is still banged up a little bit. Devon A. Chain is a rookie. We just saw Jameer Gibbs in his first game getting eased into action, and he's coming off of an injury. I think Raheem Mostert will get a ton of volume. Um in a game you want pieces in. So I, I personally, Mostert. Mostert to me is is like locked into a start. Raheem Mostert or Damian Pierce? I, I would go Damian Pierce at that point. Damian Pierce is way younger, more talented. Antonio Gibson? I would go Mostert. James Conner? I would go Mostert. Khalil Herbert? Uh, I would go Her I, I would I would go Mostert. I would. Okay. James I Cook? Uh, I would go Mostert. I think I love Mostert. <laughs> I think you love ketchup, too. Uh, Austin Eckler, play him. Keenan Allen, yep. yep. Mike Williams, uh-huh. Yep. Uh, wait on Quentin Johnston, Agreed. please. Agreed. Gerald Everett, Mike, start of the week at tight end. Oh, what a good start. Like, oh, thank you. The, the more and more I've I've looked at it last year, the, the Dolphins were literally the 32nd out of 32 teams that's, ranked. Uh, that's why we went there. And, and I, what's funny is I went to put Gerald Everett in um, – for my starts of the week early in this week when I was just researching these games and I was looking at the home road splits and Gerald Everett's much better at home. And for some reason I had this game in my mind in Miami. So I didn't, uh, and I pivoted away from him. This is in LA where Gerald Everett has been uh, much better in a perfect matchup. So I, I do like the start of yeah, the week. He's not like, just a, get ready for Donald Parham to have his, his <laughs> breakout yeah, sure. game. I mean, people didn't draft Gerald Everett. Like, I'm playing him in the league where I lost uh, Travis Kelsey. He was my pickup off the waiver wire. There you go. That would be the league that you're together in? No. No, oh, that would be one. the listener league. The Rams take on the Seahawks in Seattle. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Seattle minus five. The over-under is 46. The Rams will yet again be without Cooper Cup. It was real, real bad. Like, I'm not talking kind of, sort of bad. Real, real bad without Cooper Cup last year. 30th in yards per game without him. 31st in passing yards per game. 31st in pressure rate because you have to hold the ball because no one else gets open. Pass rate over expectation, 26. They they lean on the run. I think Mike was right when he talked about Seattle's defense being better than people give them credit for. And, look, I would take Seattle and the points in this game if it was me. Yeah, I, I believe Seattle and the points is, is the right way to go. The – the, the Rams have a terrible defense, and without Cooper Cup, they've had a terrible offense. 
I don't know what there is to really like on the Rams' side of the well, ball outside of Cam Akers. Cam Akers, to me, is set up to get the ball as much as they can give him the ball when they aren't able to pass. And if they haven't fixed their issues from last year, Seattle was a team you could run the ball on quite easily. I Let's will say, take the. I was gonna say I'll take Van Jefferson's targets in this game. Yeah, I'm open to that, but the. It just to be fair to the the stat of when Cooper Cup was out last year, it was almost completely in sync with Matthew Stafford being out. So we don't know yet. Like, what is what will Matthew Stafford and the Rams be without Cooper Cup? That that's a question that we'll get to see answered at least a little bit. Van Jefferson's just his he, he was he's been a sleeper kind of for us all off season and. I think this is interesting. I think that the volume will be there. I'm not expecting a high level output for Van Jefferson, but uh, it's certainly better than Sky Moore. He should be forced to be involved. I mean, the, the way that this game's going to go, Seattle's probably going to have a lead. Well, the, yeah, the depth chart I of mean, you have Tutu Atwell is like the season, other seasoned veteran on this team, and then Puka Nakua. Uh, he's an interesting rookie wide receiver to watch. I, I mean, it may be, uh, uh, he might be someone I even stash if I have a, an IR player that I'm um, I'm going to stash. And uh, I would the my question for Cameron Akers is I'm playing him, but. How much Kyron do we see? Yeah, the how much Kyron Williams do we see? There's been some rumors of him taking on a pass catching role for, for the Los Angeles Rams. Something to watch. It's just yeah, that's not gonna. That's I'm not out on Acres because of that, but just watching. Would you flex because we just asked this question, Jason? You 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 chose Marvin Mims over Dulcich. Are you flexing Van Jefferson over Higby? Yeah, yeah. If they're if they're in the flex, I would still go with the wide receiver over over the tight end. I think there is. I I have slight fear, and and it's just slight because I love Higby. I think he's going to be a PPR machine. He's going to be necessary. But if the pass rush is getting after them, they might need him to block a little bit more if wide receivers aren't getting open and he's holding on to the ball more. That's that's my only fear there. Geno Smith was your start of the week at quarterback. You play him. Tyler Lockett, Mike start of the week at wide receiver. You should play him. You should play Metcalf. Jackson yeah. Smith and Jigba would be a gamble. Would you take him or Van Jefferson? I would take Van Jefferson. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba is the clear, more talented player here. But in his first game as a rookie – as the wide receiver three coming off of an injury in a game where they're they very well could be not passing the ball as much at the end I, I would I'll take Van Jefferson yeah because of the injury uh, that'll I'll let that break the tie for me if I have this specific uh decision if it if he weren't hurt and he was going into the season fully healthy I would just put I'd put the rookie in and if Kenneth Walker doesn't play oh oh baby our, our man yeah our man yeah Zach Charbonnet is gonna be so dang good. Pour these guys the glass. Yes. Oh, I will have a – it's on ice right now. Charbonnet. My, my Charbonnet is on ice, and I'm just waiting to pop the top if Kenneth Walker <laughs> is uh, is going to rest up this week. Charbonnet will be great. Dallas takes on the New York Giants on Sunday night football. Dallas minus three and a half. DK has uh, over under at 45 and a half. What are you expecting out of this matchup? The, I mean, it's – this will be, I think, fun to watch the Giants' offense. Can they get it going against this Dallas Cowboys with defense, which is a Super Bowl, a legitimate Super Bowl defense? Daniel Jones, you know, we didn't throw many interceptions, but he also had the fewest 20-plus yard passes, so he kind of was making that decision that I'm not going to turn the ball over, but we're not going to get the, the explosive plays. But the addition of Darren Waller is really uh, – it, I think it is huge for this team that, that they have someone who they can give a 25, 26, 27% target share to and and have them get it done. So that's it. from from the Giants, it's real easy. Barkley is in, Darren Waller is in. We're watching the we're we're watching the Giants wide receivers. Does does someone emerge as the top option? Isaiah Hodgins kind of had a some splash plays here and there at the end of last season. Does he turn into the number one wide receiver? Does it matter? Because it, it may not matter. It might yeah. just be – this team, the Giants might be very easy for fantasy the yep. entire season. On the other side, Tony Pollard, he's the guy in the backfield, finally, for Dallas. Uh, 
this is a good matchup for Tony Pollard to kind of get the season off on the right foot. C.D. Lamb, you always play him. Now, the debatable options on the Dallas side are going to be, you know, Dak went undrafted in our league. I think he got picked up since he did. then. He got picked mm -hmm. up. By you? No. Okay. Um, he's ha he's won 10 straight games against the Giants. They That's are, crazy. They are favored. Brandon Cooks and a uh, healthier Michael Gallup. So I, I think Dak is a perfectly fine lower end QB one play. The Gino or Dak? I'd go Gino. Gino. Yeah, on on draft day, because we ended up having to be very very late round quarterback. We were hoping to get Gino, didn't work out, and then the question was, do you go with Dak or Kirk Cousins? And the fact that we had a Minnesota Viking pass catcher, we drafted Jordan Addison, that moved us over to Kirk Cousins for just the potential of of a week one stack boom other than that oh, you I, want I, that oh, stack yeah, you, boom, want yeah. that, you want that stack boom by playing sky more over jordan addison no jordan addison could still be in okay <laughs> you've made him very mad this i uh, yeah <laughs> I, I understand look it didn't work jason <laughs> i already received my punishment <laughs> all right <Okay. laughs> and it's a week one loss yeah on but Thursday I, night <laughs> i mean i'm not just trying to punish you i'm trying to victory lap myself as well bro uh, well, the, the Sky Moore yeah. victory lap. Yeah, but after there was no victory laps to be had. It was you could have just said they're all going to be terrible. Yeah, but Sky Moore sucks. Yeah, <laughs> so he. I, I, I brought suck. this up. Tony dropped passes. Sky Moore didn't get targets. was overthrown, underthrown, and then didn't get targets, which is an earned stat. So he is still not good. Uh, by the way, update: DJ Chark is out for Week One with the hamstring. So, uh, oh. uh, you know, that game's going to be interesting. If Thielen's out there. I might be. Would you play Thielen or Isaiah Hodgins if, if Thielen is fully active? I'm not saying. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. would play. I, if you're going that low, I'd go, yeah, I'd I'd go, go old man Thielen. Thielen. Unfortunately, <laughs> gentlemen, I have to go that low. Oh, In oh, my no. dynasty oh. league, oh. my second flex yeah. spot. <laughs> Thank you. We're getting, we're getting <laughs> dirty, nasty Thielen. Uh, Buffalo takes on the Jets Monday night football oh, extravaganza. Yeah, baby. I'm going to uh, – I'm going to legitimately just glue myself to the couch for this one and tweet away because Buffalo and the Jets, this is – I love football. Yeah. DK Sportsbook line, Buffalo minus 2.5 on the road. The over-under is 45.5. I think the Jets win the ball game. Ooh. That's uh, a that, man. If we have week one – and the Chiefs and the Bills are 0 and 1. That's a that's a spicy 23. Josh Allen, play him. James okay. Cook, you drafted him to play him. Yeah. Uh Stefan Diggs. I'm playing it. I would get him in there. I don't want to play another single Buffalo Bill option in week 1 against the Jets defense. The Jets are at home and they are not kind of good on the defensive side. They're going to be a severe problem for the for Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox and Gabe Davis and Damian Harris and uh, no, they are absolutely awesome. Last year they were the number one schedule adjusted team in fantasy points given up against wide receivers, fourteen total per game. Yeah, and that is, I mean, so yeah, you're not gonna bench Stephon Diggs, um, but it's really hard to say that you know, okay, we're gonna split up fourteen point eight half PPR points a game through. Diggs and Gabe Davis and you know uh, Deontay Hardy like it's not it's not great. Obviously, this is a great offense. This isn't an average offense. The the fourteen point eight is average, so they're going to score more than that. You could put them out there. You could make an argument. Oh, Gabe Davis, maybe you've got Sauce Gardner really focused and locking down on on Stephon Diggs, yeah. and, and Gabe Davis has opportunity. I think you can still flex him in a pinch because he's just one of those guys that can get a touchdown any week. Yeah, big Mim, Mims or Gabe? I would go Gabe. Gabe. Okay. I Gabe mean, I would, I would too. I would not play in a rookie for Russ. Yeah. A Russ rookie. Mm. Right. Uh, on the other side, it might not be that complicated. I, oh, it's, you got the big complication. Oh, well, yeah. Garrett Wilson's in. Yeah. I'm not starting another wide out until I see how that shakes out. Agreed. Correct. Conklin is not really, no, I mean, not this break week. glass, but I played Laporta no, over him. I, I love Conklin. I play Jake Ferguson easily over. 100%. I play Everett. What I if I did this? Conk, conk. I mean, it's fun. I'm in. Conklin. <laughs> uh, Conklin will be a lot of fun to conk with this year. But Yeah, <gasps> there it is. You. But it won't That's be. That's the goose you're getting. It won't be week one <laughs> against 
the Bills. Yeah, that is the goose you're getting. So the, the big real complication question, is the running backs. Yeah, the real question is Brees Hall. All right, Mr. Brees Hall. He's in, baby. Oh, he's, <laughs> oh, he's in. Oh, now the confidence is back. It's not confidence. It's excitement. It's love. It's passion. I'm, I'm putting him in over everyone. <laughs> If I've got him on my roster, he's in, baby. Dalvin, I love him. Dalvin Cook is healthy, <laughs> happy, ready to rumble. Uh, if you had to place a bet on total touches, I'm placing it on Dalvin. I would bet total touches goes to Dalvin Cook over Brees Hall. Brees, Brees or Javante, Mike? Oh, uh, Javante. We just asked Javante. this, I think, and I think we said Javante. But, no, I, we need to bring this up for Jason. Brees Hall or Raheem Mostert? I'm going Brees Hall. Ooh, but you wow. love Raheem Mostert. You picked I him over everybody. I love everybody. Brees Hall, baby. I'm going Brees Hall over Dalvin Cook as well. Total touches, Dalvin Cook. Fantasy points, Brees, Brees Hall. Hall. All right. Okay. All right. Well, you're back I, in, baby. I, I am. You. The heart wants what the heart wants, and it wants it bad. But so you are then, you would play Dalvin Cook, assuming you don't have Brees Hall. You have yes. Dalvin. Yes, you, I think you, Dalvin you Cook as, is a fine play. As, as, as a, a two or a flex? Probably more of a flex. Okay. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Uh, before we get started, do we have an update on <laughs> Kenneth Walker? No update. Pick your – got to pick one, Jason. Okay, I've got, I've got my other lineup then. Mike, why don't you give a brief overview of what we're doing here on the Fantasy Face-Off because uh, we had some fun last year. Yeah, sure. We go – we jump on the old DraftKings.com. Play some DFS. We set a head to head to head. We we set our lineups. We, uh, yeah, we're we're just playing against each other. And then the loser, the following week, we have the wheel of shame, where it will be spun by that week's loser, and then they wear something ridiculous. It's usually. Uh, very. What happened yeah. to this photo? Yeah, that's what I was just noticing. That is a combination of you and me, and it, it is, is horrific. It is. It is terrifying. It is really well done. Yeah. It's uh. It's in the, the kind of Travolta. Wow. Nick Cage. Y yes. Theme. Yeah. Very face off. Uh, Sorry, podcast but, listeners. There's a picture. Go but, to YouTube. YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballers. Uh, but losing it sucks. It's embarrassing and often uncomfortable. What you have to wear, but. That's we just we set our lineups. Also, if you haven't played these type of lineups before, if this is the first time you're like listening to us do this, it is a ton of fun. You can go and and you know have just you can make one lineup. We, our lineups are more like cash lineups. We're trying to find the safest lineup because right. we just don't want to not lose. Um, yes. You can play second big, place is great. Yeah, <laughs> you can play uh, big tournaments. Know. <laughs> you know, big tournaments for millions of dollars. But it is so much fun to look through and call your shots on guys and be watching games on Sunday. And if your fantasy team is sucking, you'd be like, let me check how my lineup's sure. doing. And, and if you do need some help, we have Borg and Betts, best of the business. We have the Fantasy Footballers DFS slash betting podcast that comes out on Tuesday and Friday every week. And we have the DFS pass on the website. Yeah, you can we, go, man, we got everything. So We got uh, you covered. I use it. Well, let, let's kick it off. Quarterback, I went with... Tua Tungavailoa for sixty seven hundred. Tua. Oh, okay. Well, I paid only two hundred dollars more and got the guy across the field from him who's at home, who's favored. Justin Herbert, baby. Okay. All right. Justin Herbert is Jason's pick. My starting running backs, Austin Eckler across the field at eighty four hundred. Okay, so paid up. Eighty four hundred for Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson Jr. for fifty one hundred, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. taking on the Arizona Cardinals and their thirty second ranked defensive line. Yeah, I I really wanted to find a way to get Brian Robinson in. Unfortunately, I did not because I went with J.K. Two Legs Dobbins at okay. sixty six hundred against the Houston Texans, and Raheem Mostert, a guy that apparently right. I really do like. Uh, he's only fifty four hundred, and uh, I'm getting a lot of pieces in that uh, Chargers Dolphins game. And it's week one. I got the boys in purple, baby. I got them both. I got J.K. Two Well. And Alexander Madison at Madison sixty five. Doubled up on the boys hey, in purple. It's week one. These are yeah. these have been my boys all off season. Well done. Let's, well, let's done. see what we can do. All right, wide receivers. I went with the stack. Tyree kills there for eighty two hundred. Of course. And then I went with uh, one of your boys in purple, Zay Flowers for oh. four thousand in that Houston matchup, along with. The once great PPR machine, 
Not so much anymore, but we'll see how week one goes against this awful pass defense. Michael Thomas. Ooh. Michael Thomas. 5,100 in wow. my second spot. Okay. I had uh, Zay Flowers at 4,000 in my in my Zach Charbonnet lineup, but I don't have him here. I do have Tyreek Hill, uh, which will be your guys' uh, stack with Geno, and I have my stack with Keenan. I mean, on the Tua. Or, yes, you I, have a dude, real Gino Tua problem. I right do, now. I do. I do. Gino and Tua are the same guy to me. Um, <laughs> but uh, Keenan Allen stacks with my Herbert. He was seventy three hundred. This is full PPR on DraftKings. Worth remembering that. And at five thousand, my start of the week, Jahan Dotson uh, seems like a good value. I think he'll be the wide receiver one against the Cardinals. We this have week. a lot of overlap. Tyree Kill, of course. I have Tua. I do have Jahan Dotson as well. Then for the rest of my lineup, I had to save some quiche. So we are starting Marvin Mims at the Stone Cold Men 3,000. At least I think that's the minimum. Yeah, no, it is. I don't, no, I don't is. know if it can get lower. It is. No, uh, that's that's okay. So I'm, I'm, am I live with Zay Flowers? Yes. Okay. All right, my final three. I'm taking all targets in this game. Tyler Higby. Tyler Higby at tight end. Van Jefferson at my flex. And the Commanders' defense against the Cardinals to wrap up my lineup. I have to imagine all three of us have the Commanders' that defense. That is correct. Yeah, twenty eight hundred. The Commanders versus Arizona is. If you're, I if you're playing cash, I don't know how you possibly play anybody else. No, it, I, I even looked to pivot, and I'm like, no, can't just do, go with so the cheap. Commanders. Um, I also have Marvin Mims Jr. in my flag, <laughs> so I was very happy to hear you yes. have him at the Stone Cold three thousand, and then I have Tyler Higby at tight end. I have Tyler Higby. It's hard to PPR. I mean, 4,800, so many targets. And then this morning uh, before the show started, I went, oh, crap, I have Kenneth Walker. And instead of doing a full rebuild, I just threw in Michael Evans against the mm. Minnesota Vikings at 6,300. He is my flex play. And we all have the commanders. Yep. All have the commanders. All have Higby. All have Higby. All have Tyreek, right? Yep. Yeah. You yep. Have, you have Tyreek? Okay. Not I do. thrilled about that well, all right you should be because <laughs> my difference maker is marvin mims that's fair zay flowers i got him live and brian robinson but it'll be a fun first week that was fantasy face-off presented by DraftKings sportsbook download the DraftKings sportsbook app right now use the promo code ballers and you get 200 dollars in free bets instantly when you place a five dollar bet on any football game that is the code ballers only at DraftKings sportsbook one final reminder as we close out today's show, Mike will be live on Sunday morning, tilting it, with you those decisions. Time. Ballerslive.com to check that out. We'll talk to you soon. Good luck this weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.